For as long as I can remember, I've always loved horror movies. I would try to get my friends to hang out with me in graveyards after school. I was like that kid. When I was 10 years old, I remember my mom dropped me off at a sleepover party and she and another mother were talking about this horrible movie where Drew Barrymore is hung from a tree with her insides hanging on the outside. I watched Scream and it was like the most magical experience. It's kind of like this door was opened. Soon after I saw I Know What You Did Last Summer and Urban Legend, I became a total fan of all the late 90s slasher movies, which then, you know, was a gateway drug to horror in general. Horror, like when I was a teenager, it was like a best friend for me. I moved towns. I was in a whole new school. I didn't know anybody, but um, I had horror movies and that like got me through everything. When I was in college, I did an internship for a company called FearNet, and it really introduced me to horror as an industry. I was learning all about marketing for horror movies, but I really wanted to learn production. I saw a movie called The House of the Devil, and I discovered a company called Glass Eye Picks. I became obsessed with Glass Eye movies. Habit is one of my favorite movies of all time. Eventually, I moved to New York City. I was introduced to Larry Fessenden and Peter Polk soon after I started working for Glass Eye. Dreams come true. I will not take this! <laughs> On Beneath, they gave me the credit of associate producer, which I was so excited about. I was really helping them mostly in, in the marketing. But one of my first days, I got to watch Beneath. I got to watch the cut. Not having any background in production at all, you know, to now be hanging out with the Larry Fessenden and watching the rough cut of his movie and him asking me for notes, it was like mind blowing. So Peter, he is an amazing producer and he taught me how to actually produce, how to line produce, how to schedule, how to hire a crew. Larry was great to watch from a directing perspective, both of them from a creative producing perspective. Just get us through the light and pull up. Whatever you want, lady. It was really cool working with Larry and going through the whole production process with Larry. We make movies with things that we have access to, and living in New York City, we have access to New York City, which is like production value, how much production value is right there. And we've made so many movies in New York that we understand how it works to work with the New York Film Office. And you can get like a lot of cool stuff with just a couple of people. At Glass Eye, it's almost like a family. We try to help each other out on each other's projects. It's really cool working in an atmosphere where that kind of creativity and spontaneity is encouraged. So Darling, we shot with a crew of like nine people and most of it takes place in this house and we got this gorgeous brownstone in Harlem. And we shot it in like nine days because we're at the house for 90% of the movie. It was pretty much just like, okay, today we're gonna shoot out the kitchen. Mickey's brain, Mickey Keating, the director, his brain is just amazing. He knew what he wanted and he knew the house really well. It was really an efficient way of shooting. And again, because we had this very small team, you know, we don't have to worry about trailers and stuff outside on the street. Everyone's kind of in the house. You don't really know how to make a movie until you make a movie. That's how I feel. That's why I feel like anybody that wants to be a filmmaker should just go out and start shooting stuff because no matter how many books you read or, you know, videos you watch online, you're really not going to fully understand it firsthand until you do it. And it wasn't until we finished Darling and we were premiering at Fantastic Fest and then we were delivering to our distributor when I was like, okay, now I get it. I've gone through this entire process and now I understand. I don't think we've had one of your kind before. Olga didn't tell me what I have to do. What do I have to do? Nothing but what you're told. So Most Beautiful Island was in a similar vein to Habit the kind of movie where the production is running all around New York City, getting shots. And similarly to Habit, we shot on Super 16. I really hit it off with Anna Asensio, the director, who's also the star of the movie. And this was very inspired by real things that happened to her. The first half of the movie is very much of the streets and it has this kind of like 70s gritty vibe to it. And like I said, we're just running around the city. 
And the second half of the movie is all in one location. A lot of cast members, it's shot in a completely different style. When I produce a film, the goal is to understand the director's vision and then to do whatever needs to be done to execute that vision. And that includes everything from budget to making sure you have like crew members that gel with the vision. So after all the blood, sweat, and tears of making Most Beautiful Island, we got into South by Southwest and the film won the Grand Jury Prize, which was absolutely amazing for a small movie like ours. Suddenly it got so much attention and then we sold to Samuel Goldwyn. You're not being safe. You're just another game obsessed jump. Like me, we read the script and it was really cool in the script were like Vimeo links. Click this link to see what this montage will feel like. I think the way it was first described to me was it's Bonnie and Clyde, but it's a girl and her cell phone. I love road trip movies and I love really colorful aesthetics. We just right away fell in love with Robert Mockler, the director's perspective and his aesthetic. Originally, the concept was we would have a bigger budget for it, and when we did, it would take place in the desert, and then we didn't get that, and it was fine. Then we, you can either choose, are you gonna just not make the movie, or are you gonna make the movie, but figure out how to do it for what you have. We adapted it for New York. We follow Kaya as she's uh, traveling to all these like beach towns, which was actually way more poignant because after Hurricane Sandy, all of these beach towns had been like decimated. There was something really moving about visiting these places and showing them on screens. In the bigger version, it was like the idea was we're going to build all these motels. And then you realize how wasteful that is and you don't even have to do that if you just spend a little bit of time on Google. My producing partner, Jessalyn Abbott, she found these awesome themed motels. The Blood Room and the Ocean Room, those were, that's the motel. And sadly, the motel is no longer around. Well, you might be the best thing that ever happened to me. When we were casting for Like Me, Rob and Jessalyn had recently watched Habit. They called me asking me, what if? We cast Larry in the Marshall role. Larry is an amazing actor, and he, I mean, I, it's great that he gets killed in all these movies and it's fun, but I just love watching Larry on screen. The more Larry Feston we can see on screen, the better. So it was really cool and special having Larry play the role of Marshall. Larry brings so much nuance to the role that you just kind of fall in love with watching him in it. Mickey is like a visual genius and he's really good at working with crew and conveying the vision to his teammates. He kept talking about it as like a fever dream. He'd reference like De Palma a lot. Having these, these visual touchstones based on the costumes and the production design, like they're things we've seen before but he's displaying them in new ways. We got to shoot on this really cool movie lot called Coke's Movie Ranch. That was my first time shooting on a movie ranch. It was an exciting new challenge based on the location, but working at Glass Eye, having learned from Peter and Larry, I had the toolkit of what I needed to get through it. I really wanted to be as prepared as possible before I directed. I just felt that I needed to understand like every element of making a movie before I could direct. Because I had those experiences, I kind of knew what to expect in the day to day. On an emotional level, I don't know if I quite realized how uh, emotionally satisfying and fulfilling it would feel when you direct a movie, you're pouring so much of yourself into the script, onto the screen, you're really like digging into yourself and, and putting yourself out there. So it was really cool working with our cast, connecting deeply with 
Chloe Levine, who plays Chelsea, and Jeremy Holm, who plays the Ranger, and discovering all of the emotional layers of the characters. It's been so fun and so unbelievable going to all these festivals with the Ranger and meeting people who, you know, really respond to your work. Beginning to end, had a great time with the Ranger. Speeding. Scene eight, take three. So getting to produce Larry's feature, Depraved, it does feel full circle. An awesome, amazing experience and really getting to watch him through all stages. All I want to do is like watch Larry direct because he's such an amazing director. I just want to soak it all in. I'm very excited about directing right now, but I think filmmaking is a collaborative effort and uh, I love supporting other filmmakers. I want to continue producing and direct. I want to do all of it because it's all so much fun. <laughs>